You owe me no thanks, as you will soon see. Let us begin. I don't suppose there's any reason to delay. I don't suppose. Might as well get started. Well, he's not out there. Well, Mr. Matheson's upstairs in his bedroom. Bedroom? Yes, naturally, I assume you would work with him in his natural state. So I ordered the doctors to gently raise the body temperature. Naturally. <laughs> you do realize that he cannot be refrozen, and his body will begin to decompose in a matter of hours. Yeah. <clears throat> Mr. Russell, I don't want to add more pressure than you already have on you. We both respect the wishes of my father. The cryogenics tank is shut down. If you do not succeed, that will be the end of it. I've already contacted the funeral director, and his body will inter in the usual manner tomorrow. Well, let's get started. Yeah. This way, please. Can you tell me about this toothless killer? Well, it's not much to tell. A killer got away from Paul Washington. A killer so thoroughly organized, the police department were interviewing everyone they had with records with a past connection with the dentistry trade. So here's the story goes. Paul Washington was led by the killer into a vacant warehouse. Once lost, he came across the body of a dead child from Brooklyn. Every shred of clothing was removed from the little girl. What was even more bizarre than that was the neat and systematic way in which each one of her teeth were removed from her upper gums and placed in a little baggie next to the body. This was no rational killer. This was a highly organized mind. Although the police department failed to confirm, Paul Washington froze up and let the killer get away. I do have great respect for Paul. This one got away from him, never to be seen again. I've contacted the behavioral science people. Yeah, we'll make a profile. A profile of the animals. right? Thanks. Bye. Right now, we know he's very organized, precise, and deranged. <laughs> yeah, but we don't have any specifics yet, do we? So we can't waste our time speculating now, can we? Exactly. Sorrel, let me make a recommendation. Uh, go ahead. Get some sleep. Cynthia? Yes, Patrick, it really has. Actually, it's not such a good word to use. Limbo is better. Limbo it is. Uh, yes, the indecisive, those who are trying to sleepwalk through life, choosing either to go to the dark side or choose what is good. So, how's about purgatory then? The place where your sins are atoned through suffering? Suffering is required, you know. Whips, chains, burning coals, that kind of stuff? Ah, it's opening credits, Cynthia. Um, the film's about to start. <laughs> Limbo. Your son, Donovan, he seems troubled. He's my nephew. Sorry. Yeah. How do you know? Well, actually, I observed the children from my window, and I saw he had some problems. You could have just asked, Father. 
His mother was murdered the first of the year. And we took him in. Here, Father. You can keep the cup. Thank you, Cynthia. Do you have any suggestions? Sure. What's the alternative? The alternative of not playing uncle is playing uncle. But am I making a permanent choice here? Look, I'm a priest. The decision is yours, Patrick. Whatever you do will impact the youth for the rest of his life. So what exactly can I do? Besides play uncle, I mean. Look, Patrick. You're gonna have to make that choice on your own. Whatever he learns from you, he will learn and carry with him forever. Try to guide him in the right way. Let me show you that, Father. Thank you. Sorry for the inconvenience. Really no problem. This is reality. It's not Disneyland.